morning. Um, as you notice, we're outside right now. I thought it would be a proper change of scenery for the introduction because a few things are going to happen today. We are so, so close on finalizing the build. We are at least, I would say 90% there. So I have the build here in front of me. Uh, it's all in the same place we left the last time, ELRS soldered uh, and all that. If you missed the last video, be sure to click on the card up there or wherever, find the playlist. But to continue this video, today we're gonna be uh, doing all the software bits to make this thing fly. Today's video is a bit more technical or would you say software call? Yeah, I, I don't know where I, where I was gonna go with that one. But yeah, so the things that are on the agenda today are gonna be flashing the flight controller, also as well as flashing the ESC with uh, Blue Jay because I heard Blue Jay just works better than BLHL ES. Uh, in case you don't know, those two are the different uh, software or language that the ESC uses. I just heard that Blue Jay works best, so we're gonna go and try Blue Jay. Third, we're gonna be flashing e the ELRS chip so that we can actually pair it with my controller and have this thing actually work under my command. So why don't we head back inside? I'll be showing you the tools and uh, a little bit of the, of the accessories that you're gonna drastically need. Don't, don't forget, this is very critical. You're gonna need these things, so let's head inside. Uh, actually, let me enjoy my morning coffee a little bit and then I'll check back with you guys inside. All right, so we're back inside and it's a lovely sunny day. So I'm just using daylight to film this, obviously, because it looks so good. Usually my videos are so crap because I don't have good lighting. So yeah, we're gonna do this now. All right, so some of the tools that you will be needing today is your light poles. Make sure you charge these up to maybe, I would say 16 volts if you're using 4S. So make sure you charge your batteries up to like maybe 80%, 90%. You don't need the full charge because we're just flashing, which means we just need a continuous uh, supply of power. And that's what these are gonna give us. Next up, you're gonna need a short stopper. So that's this thing. Basically, if it trips, it will cut all the power completely and essentially allow your quad to survive and all the electronics to survive because it will catch it here. Next up, you're gonna need your antennas. Don't forget these, these are very critical. So what I have here are both the antennas for this build. I have the jumper, ELRS RX antenna. So if I uh, next up, you're gonna need your Vista antenna. So this is the one that they ship in the box straight from uh, Runcam. Today we're just gonna be using the stock one just uh, for um, connecting to the goggles and stuff. And but don't forget these antennas because they're really crucial. You don't want your RX and your Vista to burn out because if you don't plug in the antenna, the the output signal has nowhere to go and it just gets contained and it gets hot and bottoms up, short story short, you don't want to rebuy a new Vista or whatever communication system you have and your RX, you don't want to rebuy another one. And just your general set of hex screwdrivers. Okay, so I saved the best tool for last and that is your Type-C connector. This is your data transfer cable. You're gonna need this today because we're gonna connect to the flight controller a lot to flash stuff and yada, yada, yada. This is really fun, you know? This it reminds me of like drums or like, I don't know, whatever. Um, so you're gonna need a cable. All right, so those are the tools that we're gonna be needing today. So let's get started, shall we? So what we're gonna do uh, to attach these two antennas that we have, right? So you're gonna need a 1.5 millimeter uh, driver. What you're gonna do is carefully and lift your Vista up. Uh, not too much because it's currently soldered in, so you don't want to rip any of the connections out. So in the back here, you're going to see four screws that hold the Vista together, the top half of the Vista at least. What you're going to do is you're going to try and remove this uh, metal plate that is protecting and hold, supposed to hold the antenna so you can put on the antenna. And that's where this 1.5 millimeter driver comes in. Okay, so you're just going to unscrew the, this corner only to release that plate. just like this, okay? So that's the little tiny plate that I was talking about. Uh, we will need this when it comes time to secure it. So put this somewhere handy. I'm just gonna put it in my tray screw. Now what you wanna do is take your uh, antenna for the Vista, just plug it in in the spot that you just unscrewed. So there's a little circle there, that's where you plug in. 
Just careful you line up the pins and don't bend any pins, don't apply too much pressure, etc. etc. These things are fragile. Next up is the ELRS antenna. So it's the same thing, same connector, it's just on the ELRS board. Now, this one you don't have to screw anything off, you just have to pick up your board, uh, locate the little circles. Okay, so that should be right beside your status indicator for your um, ELRS board. Uh, there's a little circle right beside the boot button. That's where you're going to want to plug this in. Okay, so we're just going to get Betaflight Configurator pulled up on the screen right here. Uh, so just a quick notice, if you are using a later version or the most updated version of Betaflight Configurator, you won't have this notice, so don't worry about it. I have it because it's I don't have the latest and uh, whatever, right? So I'm just going to close this. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to take our handy dandy type C cable. So um, we're going to plug this in to the flight controller right here and we're going to plug the other end into the computer. So whether you have a type C or a USB cable, just plug it into your, your ports. Okay, so we're just going to plug it in. It's going to do flash all its fancy lights and make us all its beeps. All right, so now back in beta flight configurator, you're going to see that it does. It has read your flight controller here. Uh, so the number, so it's going to say COM and a number and then your flight controller. All that matters is that it recognized what flight controller you have. Uh, so here is where two paths can happen. Because I am going to, for simplicity's sake, for my sake, I'm going to stay on 4.3.1 because most of my other two quads are on 4.3.1. That is where I'm going to leave this flight controller at because just yeah just because okay so i'm gonna walk you through how to check what uh, firmware you are on so if you hit the connect button right it's gonna pull up the setup menu and all that fancy fun gadgetry stuff in the bottom right hand corner you're gonna see the what the target is and the firmware that your flight controller is so right now the firmware that is on this flight controller is ready 4.3.1 which is perfect because i just need this i don't intend to update to the latest because i don't have a gps and blah 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 and most of my quads are already 4.3.1 okay but i'm just going to quickly walk you through on how to update your firmware to the latest version if you do indeed want to do that so what you're going to do is let's just disconnect from this step. and then uh hit the update firmware buttons because you want to update your firmware obviously so update there and here it's going to ask you what board and firmware version you want. Now you can just click auto detect and 99% it, of the time it works and, and the other 1% you're just going to have to select your board on the drop down menu. Okay, so we're going to hit auto detect. Perfect. Make sure it has the right board, uh, the right name of the board. So speedy f 405 v 3 that's perfect. And now you can choose what version you want. If you want the latest version, 4.4.2 uh, at the time of making this, it's, it's perfect. If you want to do that, that's perfect. Uh, if you want other latest versions, you can do that. Again, I'm keeping mine on 4.3.1, which is the current. So that's okay for me. Okay, now you're gonna want to select full chip erase and no reboot uh, sequence, okay? And uh, after that, you can read through these warnings and all this fun stuff. After that, you're just going to want to click on load firmware online. And basically in the status bar right here, it'll just uh, tell you that it's downloading files that are necessary to whatever version that you want. And when that's finished, you're going to hit flash firmware and that's going to uh, reset your ESC and it's going to load and install the, the files that you downloaded for the new beta flight version onto your flight controller. And that's how you do um, any firmware updates for beta flight. All right, so we're just going to get out of this menu because we're not going to be doing that. What we're going to be doing is loading a stock beta flight tune here because of obviously I'm on the right uh, firmware target ready that I want specifically and then we're just going to go to presets here uh, and select the categories drop down menu for tune because we want a default beta flight tune like you notice there's a lot of tunes here and granted these are all like they, they tell you experimental official etc etc but these are all like published tunes that you can load on your quad we're just going to be using the default beta flight for now because I do have a friend and he's going to try and tune this quad once it's finished. 
So we're just going to use the defaults for now. And it should be this one. Defaults tune plus filters. So we're just going to hit that. Uh, it's going to tell you uh, what it does and what it does not. So we're going to hit uh, pick. And that's just going to apply that to this, to our flight controllers. Now you can leave it plugged in or you can uh, unplug it and let it cool down. If you're going to leave it plugged in, I suggest running a cold air fan. So just simple hair dryer or any fan works basically. Just cool it down a little bit before you do that. I already did that off camera because the noise would be rather unsettling. So, And what you're going to do is you're going to want to open up a new tab like so. And you're going to want to go to this website, esc-configurator.com. I'll leave a link in the helpful references in the description below so you can access it quickly. Okay, so in this step of flashing ESC, you're going to be needing a battery. And obviously, if you haven't shortest checked it yet, you should do it at this point. So I'm just going to do this uh, just for demonstration's sake. So what we're going to do with the shortest stop right here, we're going to just plug it in here, right? And you notice that the outside, it's very simple. It can only go one way, right? So the outside goes into the, the board and the input is where your battery is. So if you haven't done this, do it now. So a lot of beeping is happening because nothing's connected. I have a beeper on, blah, blah, blah. But because everything that's working right now, it's, it's good. So we're just going to unplug this for now. Now that you've checked that there's no shorts on the board, because if there was, that thing would have tripped and it would just disconnect all power. We're going to plug in a battery because this next step, we do need a battery plugged in. So uh, you're just going to plug it straight in. All right, cool. So everything's connected. Now we can go back to ESC configurator. And on the screen here, you will click open port selection, right? So you can click on that and click connect. You'll hit the green connect button. So we're going to hit the read settings button in the bottom right hand corner. And it's going to reset itself. Just uh, doing it quickly. Okay, so right now on the screen here, we see BL Heli S on all our ESCs, which it's okay, but we said we wanted to try Blue J, right? So all four ESCs are shown here. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the flash all ESCs button in the bottom right hand corner. And it's going to pull up a uh, screen for us to load the firmware, ESC, and version. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to keep the, we're going to change the firmware to BlueJ. Uh, so if you click the drop down button below and you see BlueJ, mm -hmm. that's perfect. ESC uh, version, leave it as it, as it selected. Uh, the version, you can go on the la latest one if you want, it doesn't matter. And the PWM frequency, um, people have told me to use 48. We're going to click flash and this is going to, and this is going to take a couple seconds, but it's going to flash using all the indicators to each ESC on the board right now. Okay, perfect. And when it's done, you're going to have a, you're going to see blue J and the settings that you've picked on all four ESCs, which is perfect. Uh, now you can customize it a little bit and you can, uh, make. You can use the open melody editor at the very bottom uh, right hand corner. You can use that to make a custom startup noise. So uh, you can make it so that it flat and makes beeps for, I don't know, like different sounds. It has a couple different presets um, I'm showing you right now. It has a couple different presets, so feel free to experiment with it. I'm just going to use the Pac-Man one. Okay, so first things first, to flash an ELR strip, uh, very briefly, you're going to want to have this program. It's called the ELRS Configurator. Again, I'll put a link in the description to uh, download this program, uh, as well as Betaflight and uh, the ESA Configurator link. So we're going to open Express LRS, All right? It's going to load like this, and you see there's another update, blah, 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 but I'm just going to keep it as is, as all my quads are basically the same way. Uh, what you're going to do is uh, keep all settings like this. You're going to select your device category. So what kind of um, so what kind of arcs do you have? Mine's is a jumper 2.4 and what uh, device you have. Mine's is a Nano 2400, so that's good. So after you click Wi-Fi, there's a couple settings that shows up and then you can input your binding password, which I'm not going to show you guys because I don't want you guys I don't know, figure out where I am and then bring a controller and then have that controller binded to the same binding phrase and then take over my quad when I'm flying and yada, yada, yada. Not that you guys would do that, but yeah. 
So at the very bottom, you're just gonna keep all the settings the same way that they, they laid out and you, you're gonna hit build. And then once it's finished compiling, it will pop up your file manager and show you what it's created. So there will be two files in that uh, folder. It's gonna be one called firmware.bin and then another one with your, what your ELRS RX name is and then .bin as well. And you're gonna move that to your desktop, okay? Crucial, just move it to your desktop because you're never gonna find it when you're trying to upload it and flash it to your actual RX. And then for this step, what you're gonna do is you're gonna plug the LiPo in. So I'm just gonna do that. It's gonna make all its beeping noises and yada, yada, yada. Don't worry about that. Mine has a beeper and that's why it is. So I'm gonna have to yell. But essentially what you're gonna notice that there is a flashing light on the ELRS RX, right? It's really annoying, I know, I know. I'm gonna get this quick part done and that's it. So once it starts flashing rapidly like this, that means there will be a Wi-Fi signal that's emitted. And on your computer, you're gonna wanna connect to that. It's gonna pop up a um, window that will allow you to upload. Okay, let me just. All right, sorry. I'm just gonna plug that because it's really hard to talk over it, so. Um, you keep yours plugged in. Uh, hopefully you don't have a beeper. If you do, um, just bear with it, put some earplugs in or whatever, okay? So you're gonna keep that plugged in. It's gonna keep flashing the, the rapid green light and that, and then that's when you're gonna have the Wi-Fi signal uh, pop up on your computer. You're gonna connect to that. A browser or a tab should open and it should be uh, 10.0.01 or something. Again, feel free to re uh, reference my old Nazgul uh, ELRS flashing. So that's how you would do it. Um, so you click on that and then you you would uh, navigate the menus to somewhere you can upload the, uh, the .bin file you have on your desktop. After you upload that, um, then it will reset and you can basically unplug and it will be binded to your controller. So that is how you do ELRS flashing in a nutshell. Again, reference the card and make sure you do bind because it's a crucial step and you're gonna need it if you want to fly this thing at all. Okay, capiche, capiche. Oh, pardon me. I'm just trying to look for a tool, but yeah, there's no next step, I lied. This should be the end of the video. Uh, we basically did all the software updates and all the software related stuff today in today's video. Uh, so be sure to hit that like button if you actually enjoyed this and subscribe if you're new uh, We're gonna be move We're gonna be moving on to the next step because that is the fun part, All right? So I'll see you in next week's video. Bye. Bye